Namaskaram. And welcome to Prabandhams and Stotrams. We are learning Sri Nyasa Dashakam of Swami Deshikan. We are in the final part today, so I'll just give you a brief roadmap. So we have so far learned nine out of the 10 shlokams from this stotram. There is one wrap up shlokam that is remaining. So we will cover that. And usually after reciting Sri Nyasa Dashakam, uh, people often chant the last shlokam of Nyasa Vimshati as well. So we will learn that shlokam as well. Okay, so uh, we will learn that and then but when, it, when it's done, we will then start learning Adekalapattu formally, even though we've had a, an informal introduction to it. And for that, I will stop the recording and switch to a new set of slides and, and a different recording, okay? Okay, so normally we start by chanting all these slokams that we have learned so far. So however, today, since we have only one more slokam from Nyasa Dashakam and one from Nyasa Vimshati to learn. I thought it would be nice if we wait until that, until we finish learning those, so that we can chant the whole thing uh, right from the beginning. And that would be very nice, I thought. So we will do that. Okay. So let, let me just start with uh, my prayer for the discussion to go well today. Arvargal Acharyal Arulayu Ulahinile Varvargal Kamidaye Parapidave Alvane Nyalatil Anuvin Siru Madhyudayu Ereke Kalatil Arulayu Karmugale, the same composer's grace, and yes, preceptors too, to spread it far and wide, O Lord who rules his soul. Alas, his wisdom small, an atom sure to shame. Your blessing won't you give, O cloud that bears the rain. And I'll just uh, start with the Tanian. But then the actual slokams, uh, we will chant them later. Sriman Venkatanatharya Kavitharkika Kesari Vedantacharya Vadyome Sannidhatham Sadakrudi. Okay. Okay, so let me go to the, the tenth slokam. So I'm looking for slide number 60. Okay. So we have learned the previous nine slokams. If you remember, the first four slokams are supposed to be a, a reflection of the Vaya Mantra. The first three actually are about the, the Upayam part of Vaya Mantra, and the fourth one was about the, the Palan part of Vaya Mantra. So the first four were supposed to be a reflection of this Vaya Mantra. And then five, six, and seven, so those were about doing Kainkaryam. Uh, in this in this life while we are still on this earth. So that was those are five, six, and seven. And then eight and nine are about sins and how we don't want to be committing sins. So it's a prayer to Emperman to prevent us from committing sins and also to forgive all the sins that we have committed. So eight and nine are about the sins. And now the tenth one is, is a wrap up. Okay, so it's a relatively simple one. So I will go through this very quickly. So you know, the, the summary goes something like this. Remember that this is a wrap-up slokam. So you won't be learning any new concept in the slokam. He's just saying what he did. This is in the nature of uh, tell them what you're going to tell them and tell them and then tell them what you told them. So this is the, the tell them what you told them part. So it says here, Lord Varada, who is never separated from Sri Devi, uh, that is that Akala Gillain, Irayam and Alamil Mangay Marba, that kind of an Perman. So Lord Varada, who is never separated from Sri Devi, surrendered the responsibility. So it's again, note the fact that uh, Swami Deshikan is saying that it is he who did the surrender of his Atma, not Swami Deshikan himself, because we learned, we remember there was a slokam, slokam number three, I called it the first slokam where almost every word begin, began with the, the prefix sva. So where he said that Swami, the Emperor did this, Emperor did that, etc. So that's the, see, so he's going to reiterate that. We call it the Sattvika Tyagam at that time. So he's going to reiterate that here by saying that it was the Emperor who did the, the surrender of uh, Swami Deshikan's Atma, not, not Swami Deshikan himself. 
Okay, so Lord Varada, who is ne never separated from Sri Devi, he surrendered the responsibility of protecting my Atma at his own feet. So you see, he surrendered it and he did it at his own feet, etc., and of protecting his uh, Swami Deshikan's Atma by himself. So he did it without being asked, more or less. He did it by himself. And Swami Deshikan is more or less implying that he was just a spectator watching from the sidelines while, while all of this was happening by himself. I was a mere spectator. And he did it with all the, the five essential components of Prapatti. So we talked about the five Angas of Prapatti. So Swami Deshikan says here, that, so that Empirman did it with all the five essential components of Prapatti. And then with that responsibility of protecting my Atma removed from my feeble shoulders, I am blissfully free of burdens. So in this slokam, you can sense the, the tremendous sense of relief that Swami Deshikan feels because he's no longer carrying that burden of protecting himself. So for the first time, he says that uh, he, he really feels blissfully free from, from the burden. And uh, also essentially what he's implying is that now, now I still have this life to live out. And all I need to do now is to do that eternal, unblemished kankariyam to Sri for the remainder of my life. Okay, so, so that's the, the, the summary of this particular slokam. So it goes something like this Sriman, Niyata, Panchangam, Madrakshana, Bhararpanam, Achikarat, Swayam, Swasmin, Atoha, Miha, Nirbharaha. So it says Sriman, that is Sri Akpati, the Sri Devi accompanied him, Perman. So remember that just like the Vaya Mantra, the Emperman is referred to with uh, the, the Sri Devi together, so Sri Man. So he says, Achikarat, so he did it. So Emperman did it. What did he do? He did this Madrakshana Bhara Atpanam. Yenudaya Atmavai Kakum Purupai Arpanitu Kundan. So that's the, the Madrakshana Bhara Arpanam. That is what Emperman did, okay? And how did he do it? He did it Swayam. He did it by himself. He did it Swasmin. That is, he did it at his at himself, at his own feet. And not only that, he did it with Niyata, Pancha, Angam. The five Angas, the Pancha Angams, the five Angams of Prapati, which are essential. Niyata means essential. So he did it with all those five Angams of Prapati. So three months, so the Sri accompanied him, Perman. He did it. What did he do? He did the Madrakshana Bhara Atpanam. And he did, he did it all by himself. He did, he did it at his own feet. He did it with the five Angas, which are essential, Niyata. And Atoha Miha. Atoha Miha is Ataha, which means therefore, Aham, uh, Aham I, Iha in this matter, Nirbharaha. So I'm completely free from that responsibility. So, so that sense of relief you can feel from, from Swami Desh, you can hear, okay? Now, the, uh, the, the things that I want you to note are the following. First of all, there is no mudra in this. That is, there is no signature of uh, Swami Desh, you can hear. Remember that when we went through, uh, is, uh, uh, so when we, went, when we went through the previous totram of Swami Desh, can, he had put a signature uh, of himself so, whereas you won't find that here, why would you not find it here? This is a very powerful symbolic statement because Swami Deshikan in, in the third slokam, he has said that Emperman did it himself. Essentially, that was a statement of the so-called Satvika Tyagam. So Satvika Tyagam has three components to it. One is the, the Katrutva Tyagam, which means that I don't do anything myself. If I do anything at all, it is done by Emperman. So uh, even the, the uh, business of writing this Nyasa Dashakam, obviously, according to Swami Deshikan, was not done by him. It was done, done by Emperman, using him as the, the instrument. And therefore, there's no point in putting his own signature to it, because after all, he didn't do it. He didn't write this. That's the, the position that Swami Deshikan is taking here. So there's no, there's no mudra here. And uh, the, the Swatika Tyagam part is reiterated because it says, he says here that Sriman, that is the uh, Sri accompanied uh, Emperman, he's the one who did it, not I. So you won't find the first person 
uh, you know, Nyasyami or, or anything like that here. So that Satviga Tyagam is, is reiterated. And then the, the immense relief that Swami Deshikan gets from Bharat Pranam that, that is highlighted here. Okay. So, uh, so, so those are the, the key takeaways from this final wrap up uh, shlokam of, uh, of Sri Nyasa Dashakam. Okay. So let's uh, chant this uh, final shlokam. Now, what I did was, what I'm going to do today is that I'm going to chant it slightly differently from the, the tune that we have used before. This is a fairly simple meter, Anushtuk Chanda, so you can recite it in several different ways. But what I'm going to do is I'm also going to teach you the final slokam of Nyasa Vimshati, which is often recited along with uh, the Nyasa Dashakam. And that is in a much more complex meter. And so that requires a different tune, if you will. And in order to kind of unify this tune with that tune, I'm, I'm going to change the tune of this, okay? So in fact, when we recite the whole Nyasa Dashakam, we will adopt this new tune, new tune, okay? So it'll be something like this. So when we first recite the whole slokam so that you will know what tune I'm going to use. Srimaniyata panchangam madrakshana bharat panam Achikara Swayam Swasmin Atoha Mekane Rubhara. So that's what we are going to do. Okay, so now I'll chant half a line each time, and then you can uh, chant it right after me. Sriman Yata Panchangam Sriman Yata Panchangam Madrakshana Bharar Panam Madrakshana Bharar Panam Achikarayat Swayam Swasmin Achikarat Swayam Swasmin Ato Hamiganir Bharagayam Ato Hamiganir Bharagayam So let's see the chant the whole slogan together. Sriman Yata Panchangam Madrakshana Bharar Panam Achikarat Swayam Swasmin Ato Hamikhanil And this slokam be the last slokam of Nyasa Dashakam will be repeated. It says circled R means that the chant this slokam will be repeated. So let's uh, repeat this uh, slokam. Sriman Yata Panchangam Madrakshana Bharar Parnam Achikarat Swayam Swasmin Ato Hamikhanir Bharagayam. Okay, so that completes the Vinyasa Dashakam. So, like I said, I'm going to teach you the last slokam of Nyasa Vimshati because that is often recited following uh, Nyasa Dashakam. Nyasa Vimshati is a different stotram of uh, Swami Deshikan. I mentioned three stotrams that begin with the, the word Nyasa Nyasa Dashakam, which is what we have learned with 10 slokams. Nyasa Vimshati, Vimshati means 20, and with a couple of Kosuru slokams, so it becomes 22. Nyasa Vimshati, and then there's also a Nyasa Tilakam. We will have, we will see some examples from Nyasa Tilakam when I do a final wrap up of this. So this Nyasa Vimshati, the last slokam of Nyasa Vimshati is what we are going to learn, and, and this is what will finish up uh, Nyasa Dashakam as well. Okay, so the basically the the message from this slokam is going to be, Swami Deshikan says, I'm free from the burden of protecting myself, and I'm free from fear about the samsara sadram as well. Okay, so let me go through the the summary. So Swami Deshikan says, O Varada, O Varada, Varada of course means one who gives all the boons that you're asking for. Karudavaram tarum deva permale. Or Mukti Mare Puriyam Mughil Vannare, these are words of Swami Deshikan. Pranata Apti Hara Prabho, no matter what, you, what expression you use. O Varada, this samsara is a torture. Okay, so, so he says that this samsara is a torture. And of course, people say that, that uh, compared to a uh, sagaram, but in this particular case, Swami Deshikan uh, considers it as being equivalent to a rapids. You know, there's a fast moving rapids, if you will. And there's a, a whirlpool in that rapids, 
and this uh, Chaitana is trapped in that whirlpool and that whirlpool is moving swiftly with, with the rapid. So it's like a whirlpool in a rapid that carries away pe people mercilessly. So that's what the samsara is like. But Swami Deshikan considers himself fortunate. Why? Because he says, I found an Acharyan and who has, who has blessed me. So he says, fortunately, I've been blessed by my Acharyan and whose benevolent kataksham has pacified the speed of this whirlpool. So he says, I have found a good, very good Acharyan. And like all Acharyans do, what this Acharyan has done is he has, uh, he, you know, he has taken pity on me and this whirlpool that was moving very swiftly that has come to a crawl now. So it, it's now he's pacified the speed of this whirlpool and he has given me his benevolent kataksham and he has also given me jnanam. And so uh, what I have done is in trying to attain Empiruman, I tried other upayams, but he says here other upayams like bhakti yoga have found me severely wanting and have thoroughly abandoned me. So look at the way he's saying it. So he's not saying that he has had to abandon bhakti yoga. What he's saying is that bhakti yoga has abandoned him because it found him to be wanting and therefore it said, no, I, I don't want to have anything to do with this chetana. So it just left him. So other upayams like bhakti yoga have found me severely wanting and have thoroughly abandoned me. And, and so for what I do, what I've done is from the jnanam of truth that I've gained from my Acharyan, all of my doubts have been dispelled. What kind of doubts have been dispelled? About what is the best margam to reach the Emperor So all of those doubts have been dispelled. And what I know now is that property is the root for a mere mortal like me. So he says that I know that property is the root for me, the upayam for me. So I have lost any intentions of performing actions that are inconsistent with this margam. So knowing that prapati is the only margam, so I now I no longer have any interest in doing anything which would go against the spirit of this margam. You know, the Pratikulya Vajjanam part, I think he's referring to that here. So I've lost any intention of performing actions that are inconsistent with this margam. I have prayed to you, O Varada, who has limitless mercy, so you have unbounded mercy. So I have prayed to you as my upayams, upayam. So that prayer is my upayam. And of course, you are my palan as well. And I have surrendered the responsibility of protecting my atma at your lotus feet. So this is, this is saying that I've done sharanagati at your feet. And having done that, I'm now free from the responsibility. So this is what he said in the last slokam of Nyasa Dasakam as well. And he's also free from fear, he says. So, nirbharo nirbhayos me. That's what he's going to say. I'm free from fear. Basically, I, I'm in bliss. Okay. So, that is the summary of this uh, shlokam. And the shlokam is often recited following Nyasa Dashakam. So, now I give you the meaning on, on a line by line basis. Okay. So, he says, So, samsara, vartavega, prashamana, shubhadra. So, you can see that if this is not Anushtuk Chandra. So the lines are very long. And also there are four lines instead of uh, two lines. So this is a, it's a different uh, chandas. It's a, a much more complicated uh, chandas. But what he says in the first line is that, uh, I, first of all, he says that he has been blessed by the Acharyan. So Deshika, Prekshito, Aham. So I who have been blessed, Prekshito means blessed, by Deshika, by, by my Acharyan. Now, what kind of an Acharyan is that? So uh, what has that Acharyan done? That Acharyan has, first of all, he has given him Shubhadrug. So Shubhadrug is the benevolent Kataksham. He has given me his benevolent Kataksham for one thing. And not only that, he has done this. So Samsara, Varta, Vega, Prashamana. Samsara, Avarta. Avarta means natural, whirlpool. So samsaram ingira nirchura, so you have to remember that, imagine that rapids, you know, the, the, the fast flowing rapids that has this whirlpool in which uh, Swami Deshikan has been caught. So that samsaram in nirchura lil, nirchura lil vegatai, that speed, prashamana adakki vittarava, so that, that Acharyan has done this very good thing. He has pacified the speed of that whirlpool called samsara, so that's what the first meaning, meaning of the first line is. I, blessed by the Acharyan, 
who has a benevolent kataksham and who has also pacified the speed of the whirlpool of samsara. Okay, so he's now referring to himself and he, then he has a couple of more things to say about himself. Now, one of them is the fact is what he says beautifully. He says that other upayams have simply have thoroughly abandoned me, he says. Santyakto anye upaye. So anye, anye upaye. So anye means uh, other upaye. So that refers to the upayam. So other upayams, santyakto. So santyakto means abandoned. So he's been thoroughly abandoned by other upayams that he, so he refers to himself that way. So one is about the referring to the, the Acharyan part and what the Acharyan has done for him. And the second qualifier for referring to himself is that he has been thoroughly ab abandoned by other upayams. And then the third thing he's going to say is that I've lost all intentions of engaging in inappropriate actions. So what he's saying is that, so Anuchita Charitesh, Anuchita Charitesh. Anuchita means Tahada Shayalgaru. So the inappropriate actions, Anuchita Charitesh. Shanta Abhisandhi. Shanta Abhisandhi means Abhisandhi means intention. And Shanta Abhisandhi means I've lost all intentions of engaging in inappropriate actions. And this, in other words, anything that would be inconsistent with the Prapadhi Margam, I have abandoned those. And then, and then he will say, Atya. Sadhya means in this state. So in this state, then he's going to say, with all my doubts gone due to the jnanam of truth, I have prayed to you who has limitless mercy as my upayam. So this uh, tattva drishtya, tattva drishtya refers to the jnanam of truth, tattva drishtya. From that jnanam, which he has acquired from the acharyan, nishanka. So he has no doubts at all anymore, nishanka. Tattva drishtya, from that knowledge of, of, of truth gained from the Acharyan. And now he addresses Empiruman. So they, they uh, or refers to the quality of Empiruman. Empiruman has dayam. And he has a niravadika dayam. Niravadika means there is no limit at all. So he has, he's going to say that he has made a prayer to this Empiruman who has dayam, who, who has mercy that is limitless. So he's going to say, I have prayed. Pratkya means prayed. So remember that thing, we would think of this as the Gopthrutva Varnam part. Gopthrutva is where you actually pray to Emperor Man, you say, you protect me. So, so he says here, Pratya, I pray to you as limited, limitless mercy, as my upayam, samrakshakam tvam. So I have prayed to you, prayed to you as my upayam, and I have, uh, you have limitless uh, mercy. And I have no doubts at all. I, all my doubts are gone about uh, exactly what margam to follow. And therefore, the last line is saying, and having surrendered at your lotus feet, my responsibility, O Varada, I am now completely free from all burden and free from all fear. So, nyasya tvat padame, pada padme, padme, patvat pada padme, unnudaya pada kamalangalil, nyasya, having surrendered, O Varada, Nijabharam. Nijabharam means my responsibility. So I've done that. I've now surrendered my responsibility at your lotus feet. And the result of that, I am Nirbharo. I'm free from all burden. And I'm Nirbhayo. And Nirbhayo Asmi. So Nirbhara and Nirbhayo. So Asmi, that is, I am free from the Bharam and I'm free from the Bhayam as well. Okay. So it's essentially uh, saying that I've surrendered to you, O Empiraman. And as a result of surrendering to you, that bottom has been lifted from my shoulders. So I'm a completely different man. And, uh, and as a result, I have no, that burden is gone. And also that fear about samsara is gone. That's what he's saying here. Okay, so let's try to chant this. Now, so this one, because it's, uh, the lines are long, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, chant. So, so if you follow this, I've got some blue lines and I've got some red lines. So when we chant, normally we will try to pause at the red line uh, and catch your breath. Now, except where you see this inverted U. So the inverted U is where there is a, a word itself is being split across the boundary. So in that sense, we will try, because when we are learning, we'll probably pause there. But then once you have learned it, we, we will not pause there, okay? So we will try to pause at the, at the red lines for sure. But for the purpose of teaching, yeah, I'll, I'll pause at the blue lines as well, okay? So I'll pause at the blue lines. 
because the way you say the, the, the part before the blue line and the way you say the part after the blue line is, is different. So let me try to teach you that, okay? So just say it after me, let's say it after me twice, okay? So, and, and because the lines are long, I'm asking you to repeat it twice after me. So it goes something like this. Samsara Varta Vega. So, okay, twice. Samsara Varta Vega. Samsara Varta Vega. Prashamana Shubhadrug. Prashamana Shubhadrug. Prashamana Shubhadrug. Deshika Prayakshito Ham. Deshika Prayakshito Ham. Deshika Prayakshito Ham. So let's try to say the, the uh, chant the whole line uh, uh, together now, okay? So let's do this three times. Samsara Varta Vega Prashamana Shubhadrug Deshika Prayakshito Ham. Samsara Varta Vega Prashamana Shubhadrug Deshika Prayakshito Ham. Samsara Varta Vega Prashamana Shubhadrug Deshika Prayakshito Ham. So we actually stop at the red line only. So when I'm teaching you the second line, what I'm going to do is, because you're not slightly familiar with the tune, I will chant all the way from here to the red line, and then that we will repeat twice, okay? Santya Tonyai Rupayair Anuchita Charitesh Santya Tonyai Rupayair Anuchita Charitesh Santya Tonyai Rupayair Anuchita Charitesh Vadya Shanta Bhisandhi Vadya Shanta Bhisandhi Vadya Shanta Bhisandhi So let's say the whole line together. Santya Tonyai Rupayai Ranachita Charitesh Vadya Shanta Bhisandhi Two more times. Santya Tonyai Rupayai Ranachita Charitesh Vadya Shanta Bhisandhi One more time. Santya Tonyai Rupayai Ranachita Charitesh Vadya Shanta Bhisandhi Similarly, I'm going to go all the way from here to the red line. We'll do that three times. Nishankastatva drushtya niravadhikadayam Nishankastatva drushtya niravadhikadayam One more. Nishankastatva drushtya niravadhikadayam Pratya samrakshakam tvam Pratya samrakshakam tvam Pratya samrakshakam tvam So let's see the whole line three times. Nishankastatva drushtya niravadhikadayam Pratya samrakshakam tvam Nishankastatva drushtya niravadhikadayam Pratya samrakshakam tvam. One more. Nishankastatva drushtya niravadhikadayam. Pratya samrakshakam tvam. Nyasyatvat padam evaradani jabharam. Three times. Nyasyatvat Padame Varadanija Bhayam. One more time. Nyasyat Pad Pada Padme Varadanija Bharam. Let's do it one more time anyway. 
ಪದ ಪದ್ಮೇ ವರದ ನಿಜ ಪರಂ ನಿರ್ಭರೋ ನಿರ್ಭಯೋಸ್ಮಿರ್ಭರೋ ನಿರ್ಭಯೋಸ್ಮಿ ನಿರ್ಭರೋ ನಿರ್ಭಯೋಸ್ಮಿ ಪದ ಪದ್ಮೇ ವರದ ನಿಜ ಪರಂ ನಿರ್ಭರೋ ನಿರ್ಭಯೋಸ್ಮಿ ಪದ ಪದ್ಮೇ ವರದ ನಿಜ ಪರಂ ನಿರ್ಭರೋ ನಿರ್ಭಯೋಸ್ಮಿ ಪದ ಪದ್ಮೇ ವರದ ನಿಜ ಪರಂ ನಿರ್ಭರೋ ನಿರ್ಭಯೋಸ್ಮಿ let's just chant the whole slogan just once together samsara varta vega prashamana shubha drug <coughs> deshika prekshito ham santyakto nyairupayai ranchita charitesh vadya shanta bhi sandhi ನಿಶಂಕಸ್ತೃಷ್ಟಿಯರವಧಿಕದಯ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ಯ ಸಂರಕ್ಷಕ ಪಾಪದ ಪದ್ಮೇ ವರದ ನಿಜ ಪರಂ ನಿರ್ಭರೋ ನಿರ್ಭಯೋಸ್ಮಿ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ Okay, very good. So that completes our study of uh, Nyasa Dashakam along with one shlokam from Nyasa Dhanushati. So what remains now is, is a few words by way of wrap up. So I want to emphasize a few different ideas because my intent is not only to teach you Nyasa Dashakam, but also to give you enough ideas about prapati, what it means, what it doesn't guarantee, etc. So that it becomes kind of a manual for living so that you can lead a carefree life your life on this earth will be much better while you are waiting for moksha at the end of this life okay so one thing that i uh, alluded to last time was that prapatti does give you moksha but you still have to put up with uh, sufferings in this life because remember that swami deshikan in our uh, he said etad dehavasane mam patpadam prapayas swayam so what he said was what he said was at the end of this shariram at that time i want you to attain your lotus feet tat padam prapaya swayam okay so it's not that give me moksha right now give me moksha at the end of this life so we still have to go through this life and when i was discussing all the the idea of sins etc the, uh, the various kinds of sins so one thing that we saw was the the sins that are kind of year marked for this birth you will still go through them so in that sense don't think that just because you've done prapati your life uh, for the, the remainder of your life is going to be very small now uh, swami deshikan so he is going to uh, so in in one particular shlokam he, he explains why in his opinion people suffer even after they have done prapati you know, we all wonder why is it that we suffer and especially if you have done prapati you will wonder why i've already done prapati why should i suffer any more but swami deshikan tries to explain it in this shlokam and it goes something like this let me first go through the the summary meaning of this uh, shlokam so what he says is who is referring uh, is referring to the, the varada so so this by the way this is a shlokam from nyasa tilakam so nyasa tilakam by the way is addressed to the sri rangam perumal even though nyasa dashakam is addressed to the the kanchipuram perumal okay so this one is addressed to uh the sri rangam perumal which is why i have nam perumal and sri ranganachi are here instead of the varadraja perumal and tirundevi thaya so the nyasa tilakam so it, in it says here for the surrendered ones you referring to emperman that is for people who have surrendered you o emperman destroy the karmas that cause the suffering of another birth in the samsara sagam so in other words you you destroy whatever karmas will cause an, an, another birth to be taken so so you destroy the karmas that cause the suffering of another birth in, the, in this samsara sagam but then in the second line you will say but you don't remove the sufferings that come in this life naturally 
while experiencing its desires and pleasures. So, so this is key. This should reset your expectations. So this should temper your expectations for what to expect in this life. And then he goes on to explain why, what would happen if Imperman gave you a completely happy life in, in this life. He says otherwise, that is, if we had prevented all the sufferings that we are going to uh, experience in this life too, that is, if we had prevented all of those sufferings as well, these prapannas, prapannas are people who have done prapati, will again in this world, O Lord of Sri Rangam, they will show a great taste for trivial gratifications, alpha santoshangal, and not ever think of you at all. Remember this uh, song, that's kind of the argument that Swami Deshikan is using here as well. He says here, O Emperor I know why you are giving this, these sufferings, why you are allowing the prapannas, people who have already surrendered, to go through uh, the sufferings for the remainder of their life. Because if you removed all of those sufferings as well, otherwise, these prapannas will, again, in this world, O oh Lord of Sri Rangam, they will show a great taste for trivial gratification, alpha santoshangal, alpha bhogangal, and not ever think of you at all. Okay, so it's a, it's a beautiful slogan. So it goes some things like this. Kishokas padam shamathana shrayatam bhavabdao so shrayatam, shrayatam means for the prapannas, bhavapdhav, samsara sagaratil, in the samsara sagaratil. So you, you shoka aspata, shogatai tarihindra, that is marubiravyagi, shogatai tarihindra pavangalai, matanaha, uripavani, you destroy all of those. However, ragas padam shasahajam narunat siddhukam. So ragas padam shasahajam narunat siddhukam. So what he says is, but as far as, the, as far as those sufferings that come in this life naturally, while experiencing its desires and pleasure pleasures, he says here na runat siddhukam under dukkate na runat si ni pokuadilai. That's what he is saying, and then he goes on to explain why that is the case. So it, it says, No che da me jagati ranga bhurina bhuya No che da me, illavid, no che means illavidil, ami, your girl. That is, otherwise, these people, jagati, in, in this life, in this world, ranga bhurina, O Lord of Sri Rangam, bhuya marbadiyum. So, in other words, if you don't do that, so illavidil, that illavidil means otherwise, that is, if you prevent sufferings in this life as well, these people in, in this life will again do what? Will again do the following. So means alpamana bhoga bhogangal, alpamana bhogangalai, Rasika, Rasigar Galaga, Alpamana, Bohangalil, Idubata, Rasigar Galaga, Irupahi would warn her. And so as a result, Twa Nas Mareyuho, Unai Nas Mareyuho, Yenekeve, Matar her. That's the reason that you are giving them sufferings. I know, I know your, your logic behind not removing the sufferings, he says. But anyway, so I, I want you to know that the property does give you moksha but it does not mean freedom from the uh, sufferings for, for the remainder of this life. Okay, so let's temper our expectations ap appropriately. But, but it does give you a great peace of mind though. That is, even though it does not end the sufferings for this body of ours, it gives you a great peace of mind because after all, you see, there's only a limited time, limited amount of time on this earth where you have to uh, put up with sufferings. Remember that I, I, I talked about how Arunagiri Nadar and Tirupagar had talked about, you know, the billions and billions of births that we have all gone through, greater than the number of grains of sand on the beaches of the seven oceans. The number of births I have taken with sufferings, they far exceed the number of grains of sand on the beaches of the seven great oceans, he says. So remember, so you've already taken maybe billions and billions of births and you never found a way to, to get out of this samsara sadhana. But if in this life, by virtue of property, you have found a way to avoid the next birth, 
that is a miracle. That needs to be celebrated despite all the sufferings that you are going to uh, experience in this life. Right? So, so don't think, oh, I'm still going to suffer, and therefore this property was not, uh, was, was not worth it. But the property is worth it because you will get moksha at the end of this. Okay? And as far as the sufferings in this life are concerned, I've mentioned this slogan from Bhagavad Gita multiple times. Krishna, Bhagavan Krishna says to Arjuna, those sufferings, you just have to put up with them. Because they are like the, the summer and winter, they come and go, but they are impermanent, etc. Okay, so we will just have to learn to, to put up with that. Okay. But at the same time, Swami Deshigan, he says again in Nyasa Tilaka, I mean, he talks to his mind because his mind is still, is not reconciled to the fact that there are sufferings in this life. So that you can see how human he is. And we think of him as great Acharya, but maybe he wrote this slokam because he knows what kind of a mind that we will have. Okay? So he talks to his mind in, in, the, in the passion of, oh mind, why do you worry? You know, the, all the, the uh, verses, whether they are in Tamil or Sanskrit, which are by way of the poet talking to his mind, they're, they're always beautiful. Because if you think of it this way, if the poet is talking to the mind, it's almost as if, if the mind is a different person. You'll never hear a poet talking, about, talking to his hand. He will never say, oh, you will never sing any, any song like that because a kai always does what you ask it to do. If you say, grab the coffee mug and bring it to my mouth, the, the, the kai will do that. Similarly, if you give an order to your leg, the leg will do that. But the mind, the mind has a mind of its own. Maybe that's why it's called a mind. And it, it's very difficult to control. You know, in fact, uh, the Shaivite philosopher, uh, Thai Manavar, uh, he, he, he composed a beautiful poem it says, you, uh, just ask me, to do any, ask me to do anything and I will do it for you. But there's, I ask, but there's only one thing that I don't want you to ask me to do, which is to control my mind, because he says, I don't know how to do it. It's very beautiful. It's a long poem, but it ends with something like this. Jalam mail narakalam. If you ask me to walk on water, I will walk on water. I think I know how to do it. Kanal mail irukkalam. If you ask me to sit on hot ember, I, I, I will do that because I think I know how to do it. Tannigaril Siddhi Paralam, this incomparable moksha, even that what I can get. But just don't ask me to do this. Chindaye adakkiye, ennodaya unnodaya manadai adakki, summa irikkindra tiram erudhya. Konja nera un manasa kattu padutti, unnu me nanakam eru paapam konja nera thukku abdeen sunne naka, adi enak thiriyadhu. Because I, I, I cannot do that because I don't know how to do that, he says. So, so he says that he can do all these other uh, imp impossible things. He just cannot control his mind. But anyway, uh, Swami Desikan, Swami Desikan is talking to his mind here. And he says, are you worried about having to... So he, he's, he knows that his mind has this sanchalam. It, it is worried. So he's asking the mind, why are you worried? So if you look at the bottom line here, he says here, Oh, again, oh mind, what are you worried about? That's the last line of the shloka. What are you worried about? What other desires do you have? So that's the, the bottom line question that he has. But then he kind of postulates maybe three different reasons for why his mind is worried. So maybe he says, maybe it's worried because it, you still have to suffer the, the remainder of this life. Are you worried about that? And then he's going to give a reason not to worry about that. And as a second possibility, he's going to say, but is it instead, is it possible that you're worried about missing out on the pleasure, pleasures of svargam? You see, prapati gives you moksha, but in, in Hinduism, and especially in Sri Vaishnavism, moksha and svargam are different. Svargam is not an eternal thing. Svargam is kind of like a, you know, a, a resort hotel where if you, have, you accumulate enough punyas, you go there, spend a few days there, and you come back to earth. So you're, you'll be back in samsara sagra, samsara sagram after going to svargam. But while you are in svargam, you can enjoy the, the bhogams, all the bhogams, the pleasures there. So he's asking his mind, are you worried about missing out on the pleasures of svargam? Oh, 
மோட்சம் வேணும்னு கேட்டேனே பேசாம சொர்க்கம் வேணும்னு கேட்டிருக்குமாமே நீ அந்த மாதிரி நினைச்சுட்டு இருக்கியா ஓ மனசே தட்ஸ் அ செகண்ட் கொஸ்டின் தட் இஸ் ஆஸ்கிங் செகண்ட் பாசிபிலிட்டி தட் ஹி இஸ் போசிங் அண்ட் தென் ஆன் தட்ஸ் அ தேர்ட் பாசிபிலிட்டி ஓகே மேபி யூ ஆர் கிளியர் தட் யூ ரியலி வாண்டட் மோட்சம் பட் தென் யூ ஆர் யூ ஆர் வரி பிகாஸ் யூ ஹேவ் நோ எக்ஸ்பெரிமெண்டல் ப்ரூஃப் யூ ஹேவ் நோ எம்பீரிக்கல் ப்ரூஃப் that you will get moksha so are you worried about whether you will get moksha so you see he asks all these hypothetical questions or at least he answers all these hypothetical questions so on the first question are you worried about having to suffer the remainder of this life and he says here well the answer that i have for you or mind is on this earth as long as we are alive our body's journey will surely continue for that what i call the prarabdha karma last time you remember that where you know from this huge go down which has you know many many sacks of sins that we have committed in our previous lives there is this just one sack from which we are trying to experience uh, the, the consequences of the problems that we have done so that prarabdha karma so that we have to we have to experience uh, the karma that is earmarked for this life so he says here on this earth as long as we are alive our body's journey will surely continue for prarabdha karma so there's no point in fretting about it you have to experience it no amount of fretting is going to dispense with that need so so this is what he's saying he's saying yavad jeevam as long as we yavad jeevam as long as we live jagati on this earth niyatam surely deha yatra bhavitri this body's journey along with all the sufferings is going to happen so he say he's answered the first question so he says oh my if you are worried about suffering the remainder of this this life guess what deal with it because you, you cannot avoid it as long as we are on this life on this earth yavat jeevam jagati jagati niyatam deha yatra bhavitri as long as as far as the, the rest of this life is concerned that deha yatra is going to continue with all the accompanying sufferings bhavitri so it's going to happen so there's there's no getting away from that but just deal with it i remember that bhagavad gita chapter 2 verse 14 that i just mentioned just use that as your guideline now now we are comes to the second question are you worried about missing out on the pleasures of swargam and the answer he gives is well the pleasures of swargam are really transient they will be gone after just 3 or 4 days hence they are they are to be rejected so he says here tyakta the tyakta means to be to be rejected or abandoned sarve so so sarve so uh, glana bhogana bhoga glana bhoga means impermanent gratifications na bhoga like swargam etc so all these impermanent gratifications like swargam etc they are to be you know tyakta where they are to be uh, rejected they are to be abandoned why because they only last for a limited time he says 3 or 4 days 3 chatura 3 means 3 days three chatur three dinner chatur dinner you can see here so three days or four days of course he means that it's a very transient thing it's not a, a forever kind of thing like moksha is so don't feel sorry that you didn't ask for swargam be very happy that you asked for moksha because the pleasures of swargam are transient three chatur dinner they will only last for three or four days so you did the right thing by asking for moksha he says but then here is the famous that the, the third one are you really worried about whether you will get moksha or not because nobody has come back to say oh yeah you know i did prapatti and therefore i am now in moksha you know you haven't seen that empirical evidence is that why you are worried about whether you will get moksha and here the answer gives is no need to worry there oh my because the sri rangan expects orders from our acharyan so look at the way he phrases it he says that sri rangan the sri rangam perumal emperman he takes orders from our acharyan and gives parama padam for his recommendation so you are sure to get it so there's no reason to to worry about this at all he says this. so use this to build up your maha vishwasam he says so he says here datte datte rangi rangi means that the lord of sri rangam datte he gives nijam api padam he gives parama padam that is his stan and himself which is parama padam the nijam api padam kidya se sorry the de, the deshika deshika desha kaanshi deshika plus aadesha kaanshi deshika the acharyans aadesha means order so the orders of the acharyan 
Kangshi So the Emperor Mani expects orders from the Acharyan and he obeys them. And our Acharyan has already said, you will get property, you will get moksha. So your name is on, on that list. So, so don't worry about that because Emperor Man takes orders from, uh, from our Acharyan. And then he goes on to say, Kimte Chinte, Param Kimte Chinte, Paramapi Padam, Kidyase Yat Punaspam. So he says, Kidyase. So Kidyase means Varundigin Rayo, are you worried? Yat Punaspam. So Punas uh, puna, puna means against, and Thom means you, of course. So are you still worried again? Kimte Chinte. So what are you worried about? Kimte Chinte. Param Api Padam. Where Yenna Ishta Merikirade. Param Api Abhimatam. Param Abhimatam, where yanna ishtam vanakirikirade. What else, what other desires have you, do you have that I have not already answered by these three the lines of, of shlokam? So, so the bottom line is, I think it is probably natural for us even after prapati, after we have done prapati, to have these kinds of questions that apparently were tormenting Swami Deshikan, but you can always come back to this shlokam. So that's, that's what I mean when I say I want to give you this manual of living so that whenever you have these doubts, you can go back to slokams like this, and you can say, well, even Swami Deshikan had these doubts, and he addressed it with this slokam. So this this slokam will address my doubts as well. Okay, my doubts. Yeah. And um, Swami Deshikan has a similar kind of uh, conversation with his mind in Tamar as well. So in Tamar, there is a, a prabandham called Amrita Ranjini that he wrote. And he has a similar conversation with mind as well. So, he, for example, he says, Maname ni mahira de irupa de yankal. Maname ni mahira ma irkine. Or say, Santosh ma ve illi ene. Yennat nala ni Santosh ma illa. Yennat nala ni Santosh ma illa. Yennat nala ni Santosh ma illa. Yennat nala ni So, he, let's go through this again. Because, he, again, he's trying to soothe his mind. And, and this is a situation that we will find ourselves in, even if we have done property. So, that's the reason that I want to expose you to this particular asuram as well. So it goes something like this. So let's go through the meaning here. So he says here, the Acharyas who are not swayed by small gratification, Alpha Santoshangal, Alpha Bogangal, they surrendered me at his feet. And, and when after he did that, after my Acharyan did that, this Tirumal, the Sri Shriyakpati, he took me under his protection. He guaranteed me moksha. And so he himself will destroy all the karmas that cause the next birth and will place me in everlasting paramapadam. So he's trying to assure his mind that that will happen, that he will place me in everlasting paramapadam. So, oh mind, why is it that you are unhappy? And then he says, I'll tell you something that will serve you well. You know, instead of worrying about this, let's do something constructive. You know that when you finally get to moksha, you're going to be doing eternal kankariyam to Emperor Man. Why don't we get a head start on this, even in this life, by doing kainkaryams right here on this earth. So that's what he's going to, to tell the mind here. I will tell you something that will serve you well. For as long as you are here on this earth in this life, seek true knowledge that will prevent all kinds of apacharams, okay? all kinds of blemishes, and all the kainkaryams that we could get to do in Paramapadam, well, we could do something similar right here during our life. So don't think that you have to wait until Paramapadam to do Kainkaryam's Tempurman. Why, instead of worrying, why didn't you start doing the Kainkaryam's Tempurman right here during this life? And don't ask this mocking question, oh, what's the big deal? Of what use are Kainkaryam's done here on earth? Don't assume that air with me and don't ask me in a, in a mocking sort of way. What use are the, the big kainkaryams done here on earth? Instead, just go and do the, the kainkaryams, get a head start on them right here in this life, instead of worrying about well, whether I will get moksha or not, etc. So let's go through the meaning here. Siru Payanil Padiyada Tagavur. Tagavur are the achar, Acharyans. Siru Payanil Alpha Santoshangalil Alpha Bogangalil Padiyada Manadai Salutta the Acharyal. Yemai Chevka. Yen Yenai Empermanidam Chetar Hal, Adekalam Sayavitar, Sayavitar Hal. And when my Acharyan, when my Acharyans did that, and what did this Thirmal do? Adekalam Kunda Thirmal. This Thirmal, this Thirmal, this Shayapati, he took me, he took me as into his protection. He guaranteed moksha for me. And then what will he do? 
where he will do the following tane marupiravi arut he will cut off all the sins that lead to marupiravi next life and he will put us in the ariya banal ariya means a permanent one that has no end one will that will not fade ariya the banatil banam generally means sky but here it means paramapadam ariya the banatil which means in paramapadam vekum he will put me he will put us on in paramapadam so given that oh mind manameni magirade irupadu enkol edukkaga vendi manasey me innamum santoshame illama irukka uruvadu unakku uraike na unakku onnu solren gele adu vandu unakku romba mukkiyamaanadhu it is very relevant to you uruvadu means it kind of relevant to you that will serve you well unakku uraike na unakku onnu solren inge irukkum kaalam for the remainder of this life that is you've done prapatti but inge irukka porom namba inda life mudira inda vaarkai mudira varai அப்படி இங்க இங்க இருக்கும் காலம் வரைக்கும் இங்கு இருக்கும் காலம் ஒரு பிழையும் புகுதாத உணர்த்தி வேண்டி உணர்த்தி மீன்ஸ் ஞானம் இந்த ஞான ஆஸ்க் சீக் த knowledge which makes sure that no blemishes that we that will prevent all kinds of blemishes so seek that kind of knowledge and then peruvadu ellam paramapadathila namakku ennallam kaingiryam pandra bhagyam kadaikumo peruvadu ellam இங்கே நாம் பெற்று வாழ அந்த பாக்கியத்தை நம்ம இந்த உலகத்திலேயே அடைஞ்சு வாழறதுக்கு அடிமையால் ஏது இப்படி பெரிய அடிமைத்தனம் இங்கேயே பண்றதுனால என்ன பெருசு நட என்ன பெரிய பலன் வந்துட போகுது அப்படின்னு இகழைகள் நீயே டோன்ட் ஆஸ்க் திஸ் மார்க்கிங் கொஸ்டின் டோன்ட் மேக் பண்ண பெட் இன்ஸ்ட் ஜஸ்ட் டூ இட் இட் ஏஸ் இயர் ஸோ எனிவேவர் யூ டவுட் வெனவர் யூ கெட் இஸ் டவுட்ஸ் about whether you will get to moksha or not instead direct your mind to accept that fact that you will get to moksha and instead of doing worrying about it just spend your time doing uh, kankaryams right here on this earth and getting a head start on it okay okay so the wrap up words so this nyasa uh, dashakam murti sirudhi kirti pirade it's one of the shortest shlokams but it's this glory is is incredible and that's why i've taken a tremendous amount of time to teach it to you the slogan itself would have taken maybe just an hour or so to teach uh, prapatti we know that uh, is a soul moksha upayam for all, all of us and uh, they they say that it should be done preferably acharya mukhena that is in front of the acharyan or with the help of the acharyan so in that sense you should seek out an acharyan and try to do the prapatti and the beautiful thing about nyasa dashakam is that it codifies prapatti it lends its structure and it makes it a science so it, it it's no longer just some abstract concept it has there's a well defined structure to it it has well defined angas etc and that's the beauty of nyasa dashakam and we saw in the very first shlokam of nyasa dashakam this is more or less the key phrase in sri vaishnavism namama sri pate eva this namama is there's no antidote to your ego or conceit uh, other than this namama and there's no antidote better than this phrase namama idu ennudaiya illai adu ennudaiya illai idu ennudaiya illai etc how can you have any ego how can you have any conceit if you have nothing at all right that's exactly the point namama shri pate eva everything is all yours so impermanence is not mine my atma the responsibility of protecting it any phalan arising from it etc and we also saw that it has five angas you know that the names may may take some time for you to to memorize Uh, like on kulya sankalpam etc but the concepts are very easy to understand do what pleases him shun what doesn't and just accept just say that i'm incapable of bhakti yogam or any other margam for attaining moksha and then he will surely protect us no doubt that's mahavishwasam i've given you a tremendous number of examples and about about people who had that mahavishwasam like prahladan for example and therefore whenever that doubt overcomes you just go back to reading the the stories of those uh, examples and the mahavishwasam will come back come back to you and this go through the varna which is pray namely please protect me the satvika tyagam is very important the kartrutva tyagam if i did something it's not me he did it if my action bears fruit it's not due to me that fruit that phalan it comes from him only and not only that that phalan is not mine it is his for uh, it is his it is for him to take okay and the prapatti's benefits i've already said it's but the benefits are twofold the moksha after this life 
but not only that, the remainder of this life, you will be, uh, you should really be a noble person at peace with yourself. But remember that if you don't have to worry about the next life at all, how, how much more pe peaceful you can be, think of that. And also the, the property, what you do for property, if you internalize it completely, if you do that pratikulya, some marjanam, uh, etc., you will become a wonderful person, you know, because if you do all the things that please him, Puruman, and avoid all the things that, that displease him, then you will become more or less a model citizen. So in that sense, you will not only be at peace, you will be a noble person worth uh, emulating. For example, you'll have an exalted character, you have no ahamkara, no mamakara, you'll be doing good deeds only, you'll have a kind disposition, you will not be attached to the material pleasures of this earth, you will be detached. And that philosophy of sounds to pictures from Bharata, that tolerate all those uh, sufferings, and the, the, and the feeling of yadumure, yavaram karakelis. Everybody is my relative, that kind of feeling you will get. And all of these will, of course, make you a, a wonderful person that would be the envy of everybody else. But that, all of that requires truly internalizing property. Okay? And then this is, the, this is the last slide. So work on developing the Mahavishwasam. And remember the, the great examples from Itihasas and Puranas. And I would also recommend you that, that you learn the three charma slokas, you know, one from Ramayana, one from Bhagavad Gita, and, and one about the, the Varaha charma slokam. And so I think that those will reinforce your belief in, in property. And then Nyasa Dashagam, of course, is a short slokam, so it should be very easy for you to memorize. And if possible, the last part of Sharanagati Gadhyam as well. We have gone through that a couple of times and internalize their messages. So remember Empirman's reaffirmation of his cross promise in, in the Sharanagati Gadhyam. So the beautiful thing about Sharanagati Gadhyam is that there are parts of it that were apparently said by Empirman. The parts that are the most interesting are the ones where he says, Rama never speaks in two voices. So whatever I said in Ramayana, by, you know, by way of uh, you know, a person surrendering to me just once, and then I'll make sure that I'm protecting from, protecting from all kinds of uh, living beings. Sakrudeva, Prabhannaya, Tavasmi, Picha, Yachate. So, so that kind of promise uh, I give, the, I kind, that kind of promise I give. So learn those uh, and, and here in Sharanagati Gadhyam, uh, Impirman is clearly saying that I don't speak in two voices. So whatever I said in Ramayana, I, I meant it seriously. And so he finishes off uh, that by saying about gaining true knowledge about me, realizing me, attaining me, etc. have no doubt and, and be at peace, he says. Okay, so atastvam, so, so tava tattvate, atastvam tava tattvato madhyana darshana praptishu nisham shayaha sukhamasvara. Nisham shayaha do have no doubts at all about gaining true knowledge about me or realizing me or attaining me and sukhamasvara. So it's a very beautiful word. Remember that Empiruman said it, he wants you to be happy, okay? And so I'll, I'll finish off with this slogan that we, we have already seen. That's Manamayan, Imairade, Irupadenko, etc. Come back to this slogan if you ever find your mind being in that state of Sanchalam, okay? So now I'll finish off by saying Arvar, Empirumanar, Deshikam, Tirvadigle, Sharanam. That concludes our study of Nyasa Dashakam. And what we will do is we will finish by chanting this whole slogan together. You will chant with me together all the way. So let's go back to, uh, let me go back to the, the first page. I have to scroll back to all. Go to the slide. Okay, so get ready to chant it. We'll start with the with the Tanian, and we will start chanting that new uh, ragam that we have learned today. Okay, so just say it with me. Sriman Venkatanatharya Kavitarkika Kesari Vedanta Charya Varyome Sannidhattam Sadakhrudi Aham madrakshana bharo, madrakshana phalam tata, namam shri pateye revet, yatmanam nikshi pet buddha, 
अहम मद्रक्षण भरो मद्रक्षण फल तथा नम मीपदे निक्षिपे बुध यकिंचन श्रीमन अनुकूलोन्यवर्जित विश्वास प्राथना पूर्व आत्मरक्षा भर स्वयी स्वामीशेष स्वशं स्वरन निर्भर स्वदत्त स्वधिया स्वाथम स्वस्मिन्मा स्वयं श्रीमीष्टरद स्वामस्म शरण गेहवसने मदम प्रापय स्वयं स्वच्छे स्थिर सत्प्येक प्रयोजन निषिद्ध काम्यूषणेदी जुष्ट भगव स्तव निपराधेशु कैंकु निखिल चेतना चेतनात्मक स्वकैंकोपकरण वरद स्वीकुर स्वयं स्वेकक्ष्य मम करुणाक न प्रवर्तय पापानी प्रवृत्ता निवर्तय अकृत्याणत्या वर्जन च मे क्षमस्व निखिल देव प्रणतात्मर प्रभो श्रीमात पंचांग मद्रक्षण भरापण अचीक स्वयं स्वस्मिन् अतोघमिघ निर्भर श्रीमात पंचांग मद्रक्षण भरापण अचीक स्वयं स्वस्मिन् अतोघमिघ निर्भर संसारावर्त वेग प्रशमन शुभधुदेशिक प्रेक्षिहम सन्तोन्यपायरचितचरितेशाताशंकस्तवृष्टिकदय संरक्षक स्वाद्मे वरद निज भर निर्भरो निर्भयोस्मी कविताकसिंहाय कल्याणगुणशालिने श्रीमते वेकटेशा वेदातुरव नम 